Welcome to the Geeks for Geeks. Today we are dealing with the question of finding the maximum product subarray. So you have been given an array that contains both positive and negative integer. Your task is to find the product of the maximum product subarray. Expected time complexity is linear and the space complexity is constant. So we'll start from the brute force and try to achieve the desired level of complexity. So for example, you have been given this input array, minus one, minus three, 10, zero and 60. We can clearly see the maximum product that we can achieve from this input array is 60, which is contributed by this particular subarray, okay? see the brute force approach. So this is the input array that we have. Now what we are going to do in this brute force approach is we'll try to find all the possible subarrays of this input array and we'll try to calculate the product of each subarray by multiplying their elements, right? For example, all the subarrays starting from minus one will be these, right? So let's consider this particular subarray. The product of this subarray will be 30, which is actually the product of minus 1, minus 3, and 10. So in a similar fashion, we can calculate the product of each subarray. After calculating the product of all the subarrays, we can clearly see that the maximum product we can achieve is 60. So our output will be 60. Now let's see the time and space complexity of our brute force approach. So the time complexity will be n cubed. Why? Because n square time will take to find the subarray and another n to find the product of the elements present in that particular subarray. For implementing this algorithm, we will not be needing any extra space. That is why the space complexity will remain constant. Now let's just quickly go through the solution of this particular brute force approach. So we'll be starting by checking the base condition. Like if my array length is zero, then we are having no possible maximum product. So we'll just simply return minus one. Otherwise we'll declare our variable max value that will contains our final answer. And we'll initialize, we are initializing it with the possible minimum value of integer. Now we are uh, creating our ith loop, which is starting from zero obviously. And then we're just shifting j one by one to find the all possible subarrays starting from i right and then this loop will help you to find the product of all the elements from ith to jth index right and we are now checking if my temporary variable temporary product is greater than the maximum product so if it is so so we'll just reinitialize our max value with this current 10 and finally we are returning our max value so this is our brute force implementation. Now let's just look our optimal approach. In optimal approach at any given point, we have three possible choices. Number one, the current element. Number two, the maximum negative before current into current element. Number three, the maximum positive before current into the current element. Initially, all these three choices will get initialized with the zeroth index element. Now in every iteration starting from i equal to one, we'll keep track of the answer, which will be the maximum of answer and the maximum positive product. See this with an example. So we have an input array that has two elements as of now, which is minus 10 and two. So the maximum positive product that we can obtain at this stage is two. Maximum negative what a product we can achieve is minus 20. And my answer will obviously be two because that is the maximum product till now, right? Now let's just say that we introduce another integer value, which is three in our input array. Now the maximum positive will scale up to six. Maximum negative will become minus 60. And answer will get updated to six because that is the maximum product now. So in this case, our C, that is third option is in action, right? Now we'll introduce minus four in our input array. Now the maximum pos positive product will become 240. The maximum negative product will become minus 24 and your answer will get updated to 240. Here the maximum product that the answer has the contribution from the previous maximum negative. So in this case, the second option is in action. Now let's just introduce zero. So as soon as zero is introduced in this case, the maximum positive till this subarray will become zero and here zero again. And my answer will remain 240 because that is the maximum. 
like previous answer is the maximum so we do we, we are not going to update this answer in this current iteration now let's just say we have 450 now this will still remain zero this will still remain zero and now this will get updated to 450 so here the only ith element is contributing to the maximum product so in this case my first choice will is will be going to be in action right now let's understand it through a dry run our input array so initially the maximum product will be zeroth index same goes for the minimum product and same goes for the answer right now from i equal to 1th iteration i equal to 1th iteration we will be making the choices now you have three choices that is minus 3 that is the ith element choice 1 which we are considering as maximum product into the current element so maximum product is minus 1 and minus 1 into the current element is basically 3 right and the choice 2 will be the minimum product into the current element which again going to be 3 the maximum possible product possible from these three particular choices that is minus 3 3 and 3 will be 3 and the minimum product from these three choices will be minus 3 now answer is going to get updated to 3 because that is the maximum of maximum product and answer which is 3. Now we will move to this particular index that is second index. Now the choices will be 10 and 3 into 10 which is 30 minus 3 into 10 which is minus 30 and the maximum product will be 30 the minimum product is going to be minus 30 and answer will get updated to 30. Now we'll move to this index, right? Now we have first choice as 0. Second choice will be 30 into 0, which is 0. Third choice will be minus 30 into 0, which is again 0. The maximum product will be 0. The minimum product will again going to be 0 and answer will remain 30. Now, in this case, my i will get incremented to 4 and we'll have the choices as 60. Then this will become maximum product into 60, which is 0 into 60, 0. This choice, third last choice will be also 0. And the maximum product in this case, which is 60, 0 and 0, the answer will be 60. The minimum product will remain 0 and answer will get updated to 60 so hence you have your answer as 60 so the output will be 60 right so this is the try run of our optimal approach so as you can see we are just iterating every element once so the time complexity will be n and my space complexity will remain constant as there is no extra space requirement in our implementation now let's see the java implementation of our optimal approach so we have our function as maximum product and we have our input array a and it is returning an integer value then we have assigned n which is basically storing the length of our array if the length of array is zero we are simply returning minus one otherwise we are maintaining the variable main product max product and our answer now we'll be having three choices one choices will obviously going to be the ith element and then choice one and choice two so this will be the three choices. Now my first choice will be the minimum product into the current element. Second choice will be the maximum product into the current element. Now minimum product will be the minimum of these three choices. That is the current element, choice one and choice two. Maximum product will going to be the maximum of these three, which is ith element, choice one and choice two, right? And my answer will be the maximum of answer and the maximum product obtained. So this will continue till my for loop get exhausted and then we'll be returning our answer which is going to be the maximum product possible, right? Now let's just quickly go through the C++ implementation of this code, right? And we are having maximum product as a function name an integer return type and this vector A. Again, this base case, which is basically n is maintaining the size of the vector. We are checking if n is equal to 0, we're just returning minus 1. Simil in a similar fashion, we are creating this three variables, main product, max product, and answer, which is initialized to the 0th index of our array. And then we have these two extra choices uh, apart from the current element. And then 
the choice one and choice two calculation will start from the i equal to one iteration, and then we are updating our minimum and maximum product, which will be the minimum and maximum of these three choices respectively. The choices are current element, uh, the min product into AI, and max product into AI. Now answer will get updated to the maximum of answer and max product. Once again, when this for loop will get exhausted, the answer variable will have our maximum product. Thank you.